Now, we did mention his interview with Charlie Rose, in which Bernie Sanders also clarified his comment that Clinton need apologize to the families of Americans killed in the Iraq War. Sanders also discussed why the negative attacks between the Democratic rivals have, in fact, escalated. The tenor of this campaign has changed right. when you're questioning the qualification of a person what, to be president. Whether they're questioning your qualification, well, which they say enough. they haven't, all right. all that or I'm you're saying, questioning their qualification. You're right. you're right, okay? But what I want to say is, when I see the headlines, Clinton questions whether Sanders is qualified to be president, you know what? We're going to respond to that. But, but don't you owe it to yourself and those people who may vote for you to know more than simply look at a headline. You looked at a headline and then responded oh, oh, Charlie, questioning her qualification. It's not a question of a headline. Here, something else. I mean, after we won in Wisconsin, I think the Clinton campaign, that was our sixth victory in seven states. I think what they have said publicly is the tenor is going to change. They're going to go much more negative on us. And they have. That's the fact. Take a listen to this. This is what you said. You said that Clinton should apologize for Iraq war deaths. Do you really for believe for, for Iraqi war deaths? This is after I was asked to apologize for the tragedy in Sandy Hook. You know, put these things but again, in a context. Tit for tat. It is tit for tat. But I, you know, I'm responding, you know, to but attacks that are being made against me. I'm asking where the tenor of this campaign is going. And, and is that going too far to say she bears responsibility for Iraqi war deaths? Do I bear responsibility for the tragedy and the horrors of Sandy Hook? So, you know, let's get off of that. Of course she doesn't bear responsibility. She voted for the war in Iraq. That was a very bad vote in my view. Do I hold her accountable? No. Lots to get to here to uh, discuss it with us. Bernie Sanders campaign manager Jeff Weaver, good enough to join us today. Uh, Jeff, thanks for being here. Hey, happy to be here. To that interview, that little clip that we just saw, uh, Bernie Sanders with our Charlie Rose, he seemed to do two things walk back the criticism of Hillary Clinton as being unqualified to be president while refusing to actually apologize for it. So, so which is it? Well, I don't think any apology is due, frankly. Look, Bernie Sanders has run an issue-oriented campaign from the beginning of this campaign. There are sharp contrasts between these candidates on uh, income inequality, on a corrupt campaign finance system, on a whole host of issues, right? And we came into New York, and they were pretty clear, the Clinton campaign, in fact, CNN reported it, others reported it, that they were going to go hard negative on Senator Sanders. They were going to try to disqualify him, defeat him, and then worry about re reuniting the party later. So I think the message that the senator wanted to send to the Clinton people is, if you want to play that kind of politics, we can play that kind of politics. But if you want to go on the high road, we can go on the high road. But he was also saying, essentially, she started it. it well, seems, she did start it. Well, that's well, true. But it seems to echo what we've heard in the Republican race, something that Senator Sanders has been critical of in the past. It doesn't seem, though, a reason to echo such a statement in response. Something, again, he seemed to acknowledge with Charlie. Is there any regret? Well, here? I think, well, I don't, I don't think it's regret because if you looked at the tone of the Clinton campaign over the last day or so, they have pulled back substantially mm -hmm. uh, because when you stand up to that kind of attack, uh, people generally pull back. And that's, you know, if we can do that, if we can keep them talking about real issues and not their sort of smears, we, that would be better. Perhaps one of the smears you're referring to, the Clinton campaign also highlighting Senator Sanders' past support of gun manufacturers and protecting them against liability lawsuits. It's an issue that is certainly prominent here in the tri-state area in the wake of the Newtown massacre three years ago and the lawsuits brought by Sandy Hook families. Your candidate, though, equated it to Clinton's support of the Iraq War. Again, now. Do, does the campaign stand by that stance? Well, he, I think you just, he just spoke to that with Charlie Rose, mm -hmm. so I don't think I could add anything to it. I would say this about his uh, record on gun safety. I mean, he has a D minus rating with the NRA. Uh, he has voted f for banning assault weapons. He has voted for background checks. Uh, he's voted on a host of other issues. Uh, you know, Secretary Clinton is the only candidate in this race taking money actually from the gun lobby, not Bernie Sanders. So, uh, you know, Secretary Clinton has been all over the planet on guns. When she was here in New York as a senator, she was for gun registration. Then she ran against President Bar Barack Obama. She was, attacked him for being too tough on guns. Uh, very nasty race. He called her Annie Oakley because she was, he thought he, she was so out of line. Uh, and now she's, you know, now in favor of gun safety again. So she's all over the map. She's taking money from gun lobbyists. I, mean, I don't think anybody should be confident that they know where Secretary Clinton stands on guns.
Senator Sanders himself has suggested that perhaps Secretary Clinton is getting nervous. Uh, it is something that has been echoed in the commentariat in the sure. last few days. The Atlantic Monthly noted Clinton's recent suggestions, in fact, that she isn't even sure that Senator Sanders is a de Democrat by his own admission. This comes against the backdrop of a poll in the magazine that the two are now deadlocked among Democrats nationally. Right. It shows that Clinton does do better with those closely aligned with the Democratic Party. This same poll had Clinton up 20 points in January. What do you make then of the comments? Well, look, more and more people are getting to hear Bernie Sanders out on the stump or on television. Uh, and the more people hear him, uh, the more they like him. I mean, this has happened in state after state after state. Mm -hmm. He started in Iowa 50 points down. Uh, and by the end, it was a virtual tie. We started in New Hampshire 40 points down, even though it was a neighboring state. Uh, he ended up winning by 22 points. Over and over again, when we went to, you know, he won Michigan, what has been described as the greatest Democratic primary upset in, in American history. A week, 10 days before that primary, he was down 20 points, and he won by two points. So he has the ability to move voters in large numbers very quickly at the end as we get close to elections uh, because his message really resonates with people. Speaking to our Nancy Cordes today, she sure. thought that perhaps uh, the message in the rancor of the last few days was uh, an effort by the Sanders campaign to to make a splash, to make a, to make a moment, especially here in New York. Because prior to this back and forth, as you mentioned, the momentum certainly was with the Sanders campaign. You took six of the last seven uh, contests. Right. Has then the increasing rancor of the last 48 hours, has that blunted the impact of that momentum at all? Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think uh, it is clearly moving in Senator Sanders' direction. I think as New Yorkers uh, get reacquainted with their native son, you know, son of Brooklyn, uh, he's here. The, the Clinton people use it as a slur, but you know he's here campaigning like a Brooklynite. And I think you saw that in the last couple of days. So you want to throw a jab at him, he'll throw a jab back at you. Uh, so he's not going to take it, but he's going to be here campaigning in New York, talking to people about the issues that matter. Here in New York, then a mathematical path to the nomination would demand a, a big win. No, the, no. Our poll, our, our, our okay, poll okay. suggests that he's about 10 points behind uh, Secretary Clinton at this point. But uh, to, to grab the delegates that. A mathematical path to that nomination would suggest it means he's going to have to win big considering where it is now. What is the strategy to make that happen? Well, that's and I think you're calculating the superdelegates into that into that number because if you look at just delegates, pledge delegates, she's only 215 or so ahead of him. Uh, in fact, we have cut her pledge delegate lead by a third mm -hmm. in the last couple of weeks alone mm -hmm. um, because he's won out west with such large margins. Uh, and going forward, he obviously has to win in most places. He doesn't have to win everywhere, and he doesn't have to win everywhere big. Uh, and what's going to happen is we get close to the end of this, if, you know, if he's successful in sort of winning a bunch of these contests at the end, these superdelegates are going to start to take another look because they really, what they want to do in November is they want to win. Uh, a lot of them are elected officials. Do you have reason to believe that they are taking a look right now? What's the, what's the sense of the campaign well, in this moment that well, those superdelegates may be ready to move as they did in 2008 to Barack right, Obama? Right, right, Well, look, I think we have more of a case to make to them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think we need to do well here in New York. I think we need to go to Pennsylvania and do well and a host of other states on the 26th. We're going to do well in California. But when those pledged delegates arrive at the convention, they are not pledged to anybody, right? They walk into the door. They can do whatever they want. I think what's, what I, I mean, I almost know what's going to, that no, neither Bernie Sanders nor Hillary Clinton is going to arrive at the convention with enough pledged delegates to win. You don't believe that? Nobody will have enough pledged delegates to win, right? It's going to rely on the superdelegates are going to be the decider in this race. So 11 days from now, what happens? What happens here in New York? Well, I think Bernie Sanders is going to do very, very well in New York, I, you know. I don't have a crystal ball. I hate to make predictions. You know, the political... Uh, we love... We, we would I, love I, it if you would. The conventional wisdom is to downplay expectations, but I think he's going to do very well here, frankly. Jeff, we, were, we really appreciate the time today. Thanks. Happy to be here.